Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the Mushroom Dungeon. I'm actually getting ready to do a big run of liquid culture here. I just uh, ran a bunch of jars in the PC and I'm going to refresh some old cultures, get some new ones going. But I figured this would be a good time to do a flow hood tour. So this has been much requested by you guys, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Uh, it doesn't seem very exciting to me, but... Uh, I guess uh, you guys want to see some more details on my flow hood. So, give you a little background first. Um, this was my first generation flow hood. When I first started trying to cultivate mushrooms, I was like, you know, I tried the glove box for a little while, and I just felt cramped and uh, didn't like the, you know, lack of freedom of movement and everything. And I was like, I just gotta build a flow hood, and I'm not. <clears throat> you know like crazy handy like I can build a shed, but I can't build a house, you know um, <laughs> So I'm handy enough to be dangerous. Let's see. This is probably like 17 years I've been rocking this thing and don't judge me, but I've never changed the filter on it I do have a pre-filter on top of the fan that I wash occasionally and it is definitely probably time to change my big HEPA filter It's probably long past time to change it I just haven't done it, it's still working. I have a new one in the box over there somewhere. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's ready to go in, same dimensions, but uh, I just haven't done it because this one's still working. So I did build a second one and it was much prettier than this one, uh, but it's not two feet tall. I think it was uh, 18 by 24 um, and it had the same inline centrifugal fan on top. But the cool thing about the second one I built is that the fan on top could actually run on a uh, rheostat. This one cannot. And what a rheostat is, it's a little dial that allows you to adjust the speed of the fan. So I thought that would be cool. I used, you know, a little nicer wood, a little nicer trim around the HEPA and everything. That one's really nice. So my buddy Adam at uh, Cold Brook Mushrooms, he's Cold Brook Mushrooms on Etsy. He does all kinds of uh, medicinal stuff, medicinal extracts and that. And he and I mushroom hunt together all the time, so check him out on Etsy. But uh, he's he's using my my second generation one in his lab, his basement uh, mushroom dungeon. So, anyway, this is the one I'm rocking. Uh, like I said, the one I built that he's using was 18 tall, 24 wide. This one's 24 by 24, so you have a little more height in case you're doing taller bags. Uh, they both work well. It's just kind of personal preference. Got some stickers on here. I got my Micropose stickers on here. Lenny uh, from Mycelium Emporium. If you watch this, I had your stickers on here, but they fell off. So I got to get some new stickers from you. This isn't the greatest surface to uh, try and stick a sticker onto anyway. But I got some heavy duty handles on here in case you have to move this thing. Got handles on both sides. And basically, I just took plywood build a plywood box you can see I just used uh, simple like decking screws to build a plywood box that would fit around the filter filter slides right inside the box and everything got siliconed up real well and then I just put this uh, this is just like door trim I just put around it after I siliconed it all up to make like a nice clean edge you can see uh, when I first got my filter it had a little battle damage up there at the top so I just silicone that up and it's worked fine look at the fan here uh, so a lot of people use like a squirrel cage blower like a furnace blower I was looking at those and at the time I had trouble finding them and they were more expensive and uh, these were just cheaper it had a couple mounting holes in the side of the fan housing I just silicone those up so get you a close-up of the specs here Aeroflow CF series centrifugal fan and this one is 460 CFM of free airflow and on top I do have a pre-filter so all this is is like I don't know when you get stuff shipped to you this stuff is like packing material it's uh, almost like a pressed polyfill and it comes in sheets it's kind of blue on top kind of white on the bottom a lot of times when I get things shipped to me, it comes with this stuff as like cushioning or uh, you know, you can find this, you could probably use like a, uh, it's almost like the cheaper furnace filters, but 
maybe a little denser so one of those press poly furnace filters would probably work too and all I did is cut a circle out of that and put a just a big hose clamp around it to hold it tight to the this is the intake of the central fusel fan uh, it is definitely restricting the airflow a little bit going into my box um, but uh, it works I do pull this off occasionally and just wash it out with warm soapy water let it dry and put it right back on there and that catches a lot of the uh, larger dirt air particles and stuff that would plug up your main HEPA and I think that's part of the reason I've been able to get so much longevity out of this main HEPA because I've run the crap out of this thing like I said for like probably 17 years still rocking the same filter so the fan is mounted towards the back of the box because you don't want it blowing right down onto your filter. Idea with this is you want the fan to just pressurize the box. So the fan pressurizes the box, everything's sealed up, so it just forces nice even flow. So you can buy online, you can get some fancy airflow meters where you can test your flow in front of your flow hood and figure out exactly you know how much flow you're getting across your table and that. But the, uh, the simple poor man's test is just to uh, take a lighter. I just have a grill lighter here. And you want it to bend your flame at about 45 degrees. And you can run it across the front of your flow hood and just watch the, uh, watch the flame. So there we're entering the flow. You can see we're getting a nice about 45 degree bend. Take it all the way across and you'll see it drop off right there on the other side. Coming into the flow. And you can tell little areas of turbulence in that with this too, which is useful. I got a little turbulence as I enter on this side, not too bad. <clears throat> nice even flow all the way across until we get over there. So that's an easy way to test your flow across your table, unless you have one of those fancy like air meters, airflow meters, just uh, use the lighter trick. And if it blows your lighter flame out, you probably have a little too much flow. You might need to dial it back a little bit. So that's where, uh, they, like I said, Every one I build from now on, if I do build another one, I'm going to use the centrifugal fan. I really like these fans, but I'm going to use one that has a can use a rheostat so you can adjust the airflow pressurizing your box because that's really useful. Um, there's some inconsistencies with the filters and that, and it's nice to be able to control your airflow with a single fan. Dial it back a little bit if you need to, uh, but anyway, that's the lighter trick. That's how you can test your flow. And that's pretty much everything I can think of, guys. I just have it set up on a table. Um, sometimes I'll work like in front of it this way. Usually I do that if I'm doing an auger. Uh, liquid culture, I'll usually work this way, but sometimes I do auger this way too. It's just personal preference. Uh, both ways seem to work fine. I'm having success doing both. I had to turn the fan off for a second to show you guys this exciting feature. So you might have been wondering what these little black tabs are on either side, or you may have seen it in some of my other videos. These are just little pieces of Velcro. And I just made a dust cover to go over the HEPA when I'm not using it. And I just have a, a thin piece of foam board insulation, a couple pieces of Velcro on that. And uh, when it's not running, I'm not using it. I just stick that over it. And that'll just hang there, keep the dust off of your HEPA. So one thing I forgot to mention too is whenever I'm going to do some work down here, I try and always start up the flow hood a little bit ahead of time and let it run for like a half hour or an hour to just kind of clean the air in the room because, like I said, I'm not working in a fancy clean air environment here. This is just my basement and uh, nothing fancy. I got stuff everywhere, uh, super cluttered, but it's very functional. Got my homemade wine, impulse sealer, dehydrator, pressure cooker that's full of liquid culture. And uh, got my airbrush lure painting station over here. So it's uh, nothing fancy guys, it's just a basement. And uh, just having this laminar flow hood, simple, 
pretty simple laminar flow hood just on top of an old table down here has opened the door for lots of uh, possibilities for me. I can do just about anything down here now. So I highly encourage you to uh, look into building or buying one if you're going to get seriously into this hobby because, uh, I don't know, a lot of people rock the glove box for a long time. You know, they'll just take like a tub like this and cut some armholes out of it and make a glove box. And then they work, but I just felt like really restricted and limited by it. And just being able to have this clean airspace to work in on top of a table has been a game changer for me. So hit me up in comments. Let me know if I forgot to mention anything. I'm always checking comments and uh, try and answer your questions as soon as I see them. So that's it. Catch you next video.